Good. I just realized I'm really off brand, aren't I, with my teeth? <laughs> How dare you? That should be How Sloan. Dare you? That should be Sloan on your t-shirt. No offense to Mr. Schwarzenegger. That should be a Stallone t-shirt. It should have been a Stallone t-shirt. I don't think I've got a Stallone t-shirt, actually. I should I should I should get a Stallone t-shirt. I bet I love seeing this if he sees it. I've been doing a press review and I've got sure. Courtney, let's send Scott a, a Stallone t-shirt, please. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the I hear you. <laughs> uh congratulations on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I really enjoyed season one and it's it's so it's been so great to see Stallone. Back no, 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 no. Let, let's let's talk about season one. I know Cal Thresher season two is, is, is great stuff. Yeah. However, to see Sylvester Stallone finally play the characters you know, that he kind of grew up with in, in New York as a kid, that those, those sordid types of guys, those those tough mobster you know, always moving around, always kind of, you know, those kinds of guys that he never had the chance to play with. You know, he never got to be in the Scorsese films. He never got to be in, mm. in, in, in the Coppola films, you know, so he never got to tap into that Italianism that he truly embraces and really is. He's remarkable as Dwight Manfredi. You know, you look at it and you were watching it again yesterday, Reve, my wife, Reve and I, and just kind of marveling at the fact that how has he never played this character before? You know, from, you know, Rocky's different. You know, mm-hmm. the Expendables character is different. You know, you know, Rambo, different. Here he gets to really tap into the guys that he grew up in the neighborhoods of New York. It's awesome to watch. Now let's jump to the season two where I come in as this, you know, kind of fish out of water. It's a whole new, different world for, for my character to see this Italian tough city guy here in Oklahoma and immediately it's just the two of us just butt heads and to butt heads with one of the greatest actors of all time was such a joy for me Scott that I you know I got to be free I got to do whatever I wanted to within the confines of this character that that we built that that the amazing Terrence Winters framed and also you know Sylvester Stallone he helped create the character so for me, it was, it, was, it was fun time. It was just joy. Let's go. Let's go crush it. Let's be awesome. Let's make entertaining television for the masses. And then I think we really tapped into something that not many people have done before. Yeah. Do you think actually, I, I think with, so, uh, with Stallone, he's kind of underrated because he does films like Copland, Copland which shows his, his how, range. How he, and... how he didn't win an Academy Award for Copland, I'm still kind of I'm shocked. Eight. You put on 40 pounds of fat. Sylvester Stallone is the healthiest guy on this planet. He's shredded at 78 years old. I mean, shred. He's got veins coming out of his fingernails. You know, he's just kind of always working out. He's always taking care of himself. He's so healthy. We should all be like Sly. That should be your t-shirt. We should all be like Sly. You know, uh, and he's just, <laughs> it's infectious to hang out with him on set because he's just, let's enjoy the day. Let's have the family around. His family's always there. And his crew is also his family. He's, an incredible leader on set. And it, it was, boy, yeah, I, it was one of my favorite seasons of television. I've, if not my favorite season of television I've ever been on, because I got to hang out with Stallone. Well, what a joy yeah. that was. He has, he also has his, his finger in so many pies, isn't he? Because, you know, producer and a writer, and, but he's been there and done it. it. Does that fill you with confidence when you're with him? Because he has been there and done it and done so many amazing things over the years. Well, if it weren't for Sylvester Stallone, the whole independent film world would be different. Mm. You know, here's a guy who wrote this incredible script and everyone said, sorry, you can't play Rocky. Nope, you can't play Rocky. Nope, you can't play Rocky. And he goes, fine, then I'm, no one's going to play Rocky. I mean, what? No, I'm not going to sell the script for $300,000. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to make it myself. And they finally gave in and allowed him to show how amazing he is. And you know, his performance as, as Rocky Balboa, cinematically, is there a better performance ever all time? I mean, really, when you think of it, if you really break down that character and look at it, scene for scene, it's just a tour de force. And you can say, yeah, he made five Rockies or nine Rambos or it's 18 Expendable. It doesn't matter. He's great in every single one that he does. But there's something about the original Rocky Balboa that set the course for all independent filmmakers. And I told him, like, you know, in the last several years, my wife, Ravey, and I have been producing our own films. And now I'm writing up my own films, which I've always wanted to do. And God's put me on this course to, to write these great movies that give, you know, that, that are these faith friendly ish types of films that talk about real issues, hard issues, tough issues. And uh, in the end, it's the, the faith that gets the guy through these situations. Sylvester Stallone is kind of that same kind of guy in real life, that his faith in God is so massive that 
he has just this innate confidence. And I think that's the same thing with me that God gave me this talent and I'm not going to waste it. So I have this, I have buckets of confidence in the approach to my characters that are kind of fearless. And, you know, in real life, I'm kind of a very shy guy by nature. But when I get to play these characters, I can do anything I want and say anything I feel like, and that's okay. Wow. That's awesome. And I've had a whole career being able to do that. And uh, I'm sitting here today talking to you about this, this incredible career that I've had and all culminating into the moment of working opposite Sylvester Stallone in Tulsa King. Don't, I don't think I take it for granted because I didn't and I don't. It's, it's remarkable and I'm just so humbled by it. How have you found that kind of changing? Because I know you've done a lot of television over your career and done some amazing, been involved in some amazing things. And so many people are going to television now when, you know, 20, 30 years ago, people would say, oh, your career is over going to television. Have you right. have you seen the kind of change in trajectory and the kind of richness of the stories that television is able to, to give actors these days? Well, television used to be 22 episodes of kind of whodunits, right? Mm. It was, you know, dun, 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 commercial break. With the, you know, with with the Sopranos, it really kind of changed the landscape of television. That it was here's ten episodes a season. We're going to make it any way we damn well please, and we're going to try to see to see what the people think. And they did with that with Sopranos, and it just it, people were like, "Wait a minute, what just happened to television?" And then Band of Brothers comes out. You know, there's a ten episode miniseries, which is again HBO. Again, everything is is a seismic shift now. These phenomenal film actors want to be part of you can't call the small screen anymore because everyone has 70 inch flat screens at their house now watching tv and, mm. and their tiny little apartments but they've got the 70 inch flat screen to watch their shows so you everyone has their own home theater and to be able to be part of some of the best stories that are out there they're generally on television now and uh it's so profitable for the creators that you're getting very high-end writers and producers and actors to be part of it so it, 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 I'm, in, I'm in a fantastic spot right now in my career that I get to do both. I get to do features and, and, and television, documentaries or commercials, whatever. You know, I get to do it all. And I'm just humbled by the whole idea that I've got this, this, this kind of awesome career that I'm still a little bit under the radar, which I love, yet I get to show up in so many things uh, and, and show off. Not show off, that's not the right word. Show the ta talents that God gave me and the confidence that I have in the approach to making them great characters. Yeah. Is there anyone, obviously, you, in terms of if you had a kind of bingo card of people you've worked with, you've ticked off a lot of the bingo card. Is there still one director or film actor or anyone like that that you're still like, if the opportunity came along, whatever it is, you know, I'm there. I can imagine Sly was very high on that, I, I, I assume. Uh, Sly became my favorite guy that I've ever worked with flat out. You know, just his talent his work acumen i mean first one on set always knowing his lines knowing your lines knowing everything that's going on knowing you know and his family's always there he's just a worker bee and i, and I love that uh but i've worked with you know from spielberg to eastwood to to, to just some amazing folk i think the only the, the, there's two things that i haven't done in my career that that i need to get off that bucket list you know i've never done anything in the star wars world and i would certainly love mm. to be that i've been in star trek i've been in marvel i've been in dc i've been in you name it i've, I've got a chance to do it uh, but also i would i would love to work with quentin tarantino that's that's the kind of writing that i would sink my teeth into like a madman you know it's just his writing is just you know, i mean you look at pulp fiction you look at you know the scenes that he would craft they're they're, they're all it was all, almost like watching a stage show of there's Christopher walking, talking about a watch that he shoved up his backside, you know, three generations going to hand off to this kid. Who thinks of that? Or the scene in uh, True Romance where, where <laughs> you, know, you know, Dennis Hopper's about to get killed by, by walking and he starts mm. talking about what it's like to be an Italian. Holy cow, that writing is just incredible. Uh, but now I get to work with Terrence Winters, who is, you know, that, that same kind of genius. You know, what he mm. did in Walk Empire was just flat out flawless and amazing yeah and, and to, to be able to play with his words and sly's words now well you look at prolific writers you know you know sly wrote you know rocky then all the rocky pictures and the creed movies and then all the expendables all the ram rambo i mean you look at the first rambo film it's a perfect movie 
I mean, it really is perfect. And his approach to it was just awesome. Uh, and then there's Copland, you know, arguably one of the best performances I've ever seen. So to work with guys like that is what I love to do because I know they're bringing their A game. And my old hockey coach used to say, when you play with crap, you play like crap. But when you play with winners, you become a winner. Mm. You automatically become a winner hanging out with Terrence Winters and 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 Sylvester Stallone. You, you you just can't help it. So your game gets lifted. Uh, the the enjoyment is there because you know they're there to win. And I love that approach to life, to to acting, to everything. I want to win it. Yeah, fantastic. Listen, thank you so much for your time. Absolute pleasure to talk to you. I wish you all the best with the with the show. And yeah, let's get you in Star. Star, I can't believe you haven't been in Star. Like, I, I know, know you've been in so many things. Star Wars is the big. The That's last next. Big it's gotta be. It's gotta be. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, hey you guys! <laughs> hey you guys! Hey, 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 that's what they all say. Hey you guys! Hey!